Hi guys, uh, nice to meet you here. So I'm Mike, I'm doing engineering for Fluence Labs. And today I'm going to tell you about our way to approach complex project or complex problem of coordination uh, Web3 computing workloads. In particular, the agenda is as follows. So first of all, we will talk a bit about like the problem itself, about what's the difficulty uh, with algorithms and distributed networks. Then I will show you how we approach this problem with Aqua VM. Uh, then I will talk a bit about our implementation of our proposal for AquaVM. And finally, uh, I will show you, I will talk a bit about our new group uh, devoted to distributed choreography and composition uh, and um, like where we want to share our experience uh, on that problem and probably unite some forces to solve some difficult problems and tasks in this area. So let's start with the algorithms and the like assumptions and questions. So, okay, let's say that we have like a way to run computation locally on a peer, like in the form of function or a service. And let's say that this is a function from some inputs to arguments, some, some, some outputs. Here I denoted by CID, but it doesn't matter. It's just a way how you can uh, type arguments and outputs. Okay, let's say that we can solve this problem. Yeah, for example, we can use WebAssembly, we can use Docker, whatever. But uh, there is a much more complex problem. Okay, uh, let's say that we have now distributed environments and we have a lot of such functions. How we can compose them? How we can build this F system that is composition of different, uh, different functions located on different peers? And actually for this particular question, uh, particular problems, there are a lot of questions. Yeah, for example, uh, how to put this function where it should be? Like, how to advertise services in this network, how to discover them, and a lot of questions. Uh, and humanity now like, came up with three approaches for that problem. The first one is centralized computing. Those web two, like usual clouds, like Google clouds, IBM clouds, and so on. A lot of, a lot of web two clouds. Uh, on the other side, there is on-chain computing, blockchains, and all the stuff, all DOT technologies. But there is also decentralized computing. Yeah, I, I, I sure that every, every one of you know what, what is it. So I, uh, and what is the benefit of each approach there? So I won't like cover all of them. But there is a, <clears throat> okay, let's say that we stick with this approach with decentralized computing. And um, um, there are actually a lot of models to express and orchestrate decentralized computing. But actually, like almost all of them are expressed with a so-called fork joint pattern. In other words, let's say that we can express this rhombus somehow uh, with our language, runtime, stack, whatever. Ah, sorry. Uh, whatever. And if we can do that, so actually we can express almost all problem that we can like map in distributed algorithms. It's very, very like a uh, essence of, of a problem. Uh, but okay, if we like have this observation, now how we can like find a theory that we can use as a theory behind our stack, like runtime or whatever. And there is, a, there is an answer, there is a natural answer to this question called pi calculus. Pi, pi calculus is a kind of, uh, so there are actually a lot of branches of pi calculus, a lot of types. Uh, but what's the, <clears throat> the same is all different variety is that they have this as a score yeah, that I called core. For example, this, this one is about like calling functions. In Pi calculus, it's called like sending some uh, values to some channel or to some name and receive it back from this name or channel. But the most important uh, in this task to express for joint pattern is the combinators. In Pi calculus, there are three combinators. Sequential execution, parallel execution, and like so-called execution with errors. It's a bit more complex topic, but I, uh, it's presentation not about that, but it's, we, can, we can consider it as an execution with errors, with catching errors. Also, there is a branch and there is a restriction. Restriction could be considered as a scoping in the like, uh, usual programming languages. And of course, replication. Replication makes the spy calculus turn complete. Uh, but okay, it's a theory, but what about practice? Okay, let's say that we have a uh, like real problem. We want to call different like set of oracles, get prices for some symbol from these oracles, 
and then compute average of these prices. Or for example, have a BFT consensus or whatever on like a lot of values there. And then uh, transmit result back to our peer. How we should do that? So on the last part of the slide, you could see like six lines of code that solve this problem. It's written on our language called Aqua that's built on PyCalculus. So actually like under the scenes, PyCalculus and uh, actually there is a kind of uh, more uh, general calculus co called uh, like some other type system that doesn't measure what was uh, how they called. But uh, like from a practice, it's simple. Like if you provide a way to make it like in six line of code, it's really useful. Uh, okay, and now let's see how we how we actually approach that. Uh, but first of all, let's talk a bit about how we think about these problems, how we think about like our uh, research ideas and how we approach complexity of development. For that, we use idea of similarity. Yeah? In mass terms, it's a homomorphic mapping. Let's say that we have this mapping where domain X is uh, our aqua VM or our approach and codomain is Y and Y is right, like some different topics. And the homomorphic ma mapping idea is idea of this equation. It's really simple one and it's a practice in common words, it's just idea of similarity between different areas. And what's about why? So our approach based on different calculus, namely pi calculus, lambda calcul calculus, and a bunch of other theories, uh, as well as for example, like compiler theory. Uh, okay. Um, one way to consider aqua VM is to consider it as a finite, finite state machine. This finite state machine takes two states, like so-called current state, the previous state, and produces a new state in the list of peers where the state should be sent so by, by some runtime. We don't care here about networking, about all the stuff, but we just care only about algorithms there on this level. Uh, and this function is a pure function. It's compiled to WebAssembly. It doesn't have any imports. So because of that, it's really simple to port it anywhere. For example, now we are working to run it on a Filecoin virtual machine because we want to use Filecoin uh, layer for payments. And it's really simple. But it's not all. Like uh, to make this function uh, like really pure, we need to provide a way to pass like call like uh, to extract call requests from AquaVM and pass call results for those call requests. Why does it need it? Because it provides provides a way to like uh, first of all, yeah, make this as, as a pure function. Then to, it allows a synchronous service execution peer. Let's say that we don't, don't have the scheme here yeah, and we have a kind of import function from AquaVM. Now it would require you some like a lot of moving parts here. Yeah, because for example, it could be made by, I don't know, it could be made synchronous, it would take a lot of time and it would be, wouldn't allow like a synchronous service calls and, and whatever. Um, and also in this, like the last process of the scheme that execution takes a fixed time. And there are only two ways to like, uh, two ways how AquaVM could be triggered. The first one is uh, when a new network packet came from a network, yeah? And then AquaVM should be run with this current state. Current state is a new state obtained from network. Uh, and the second case is a like handle call result when it's ready, when some service provided the result then it should be passed into AquaVM. Okay, now let's consider AquaVM instructions. Uh, so there are 14 instructions, and one of the most powerful is a like, call instruction. Call instructions uh, allows you to uh, like call this F peer function, F function that located in a particular peer. Uh, the, these three instructions, there are like came directly from PyCalculus allows you to express this rhombus pattern for a joint pattern. Yeah, we, we can, for example, do sequential execution, parallel execution, execution with catching errors, and uh, like, and with combination of all of them, we can express almost any uh, distributed algorithm. And there are a bunch of other uh, instructions. For example, we have match and mismatch for branching. We have like some like iteration with fault and next that could be considered as a fixed uh, combinator in uh, terms of calculus. Yeah, we have like uh, instructions that inspired by category theory, like uh, this instruction to apply some lambdas to values, uh, apply functors and all the stuff. 
Um, and a bunch of structures that are just useful for code generation, like now that simply does nothing, yeah, never that stops execution of a particular branch and fail to throw, throw in here. There is a 14 instructions and it's, the set is a, is a, is a full, is a complete and soundness uh, because per calculus is soundness. Uh, now let's consider a simple example of fork join pattern and how Aqua VM executes this. Let's say that we have this script, the simple script, yeah, uh, now we will uh, pass through details, through instruction by instruction. Uh, but first of all, we need to say something more about how AquaVM works. So in AquaVM, there is no saved entry point. Every time the execution st starts from the very beginning, from the first instruction. Uh, and the, finally, when a new result uh, obtained, this result contains linearized execution trace of each of these instructions that, was, uh, that were executed. Uh, okay, let's say that we start the script on the peer with peer ID user, for example. Now we could see on this on this part of the site slide that we have like a peer ID now as a user. It's it's important, and the first instruction here is a uh, seek, and seek basically takes two instructions and executes them uh, one by one. It executes the second instruction here is a seek another uh, seek instruction only if the first instruction was executed successfully. The first instruction is a par. So, okay, we should go next further to the par, and par differs from seek, that's it's execute two instructions simultaneously. Here are the two instructions, there are two call, calls, to provider one and provider two. So, but we started on a peer, with peer ID user, so we can't, and AcoVM uh, obtains here peer ID, from this part, yeah? So basically signature of call is a peer ID, service name, function name, arguments, and the result should be bound. And AquaVM uh, obtains that's so like, okay, it's provider one, provider two, it's not user, not user ID, peer ID. Then we should uh, like put in the next peers that's produced by AquaVM's result, just the providers, provider one, provider two, and a new state. Uh, in this state, uh, I won't cover that because I won't have much time for that, but in this state, there would be like uh, some values that represent that these calls were, were actually ca uh, called, yeah? and the result was uh, sent to the peers with the signatures. Okay, and now it's how Rombus there works. Now, by some runtime, so some runtime that executes AquaVM obtains this next peers, this two next peers, and should send this data to these two peers simultaneously. Or whatever, it, AquaVM doesn't consider it. It's uh, kind of on the next level of abstraction. And then on each of these peers of provider one and provider two, the same code will be executed. So AquaVM starts with the very beginning, like with the CQ again, like pass through this block, and this par uh, treated as a completed when only one like uh, instruction is completed. And okay, let's say that we run on the provider one, then this call will be completed. Uh, there are some details, but I uh, won't cover them. Uh, if, if you are interested how exactly it will be executed, please find me after my talk or ask a question after that. So let's say that on peer one, we like called successfully service prices and obtained result in the price one variable. Uh, and then, executes on this provider one uh, falls into this call instruction. And this call instruction called service average, oh sorry, peer, uh, should call service average service on a peer average. And this peer ID is not as, a, as a, we have, it's not provider one or provider two. Then in the next peer, there will be average in a new state. And it's the same, the same for provider two. Um, Okay, what, what's, now, what's now should be should be done on uh, this average peer? On average peer, uh, like, execute starts again from the very beginning, all this instruction passed, until we met this average, uh, this call average average service. And now we can see that in arguments there are two variables, price one and price two. And for these variables, we have so-called joint behavior. And this uh, call actually will be executed only if uh, these, all these two variables will be ready. All these two results will came to our peer. Like somehow, like some moment of time, it doesn't matter for AquaVM because AquaVM doesn't consider about networks, about all the stuff. 
And finally, when all these results are ready and they came to our service, to our average service, then the result will be produced and then we'll pass to user back, to user peers that want to see this result. Okay, and it was uh, like a simple, simple example of how rhombus pattern could be expressed with ACOVM and how like ACOVM executes this particular small script. Of course, like uh, <laughs> doing the job like manually by, by hands, it's not possible, yeah? And for that we have like high level language called Aqua that allows you to compile like uh, to this intermediate presentation, and we, we call this as an intermediate presentation. Um, and what about data, data types in Aqua, uh, in Aqua VM? Actually, we have three types of data types. The first one is the scalars. They are fully consistent. So, like, when you run one script on the same peers that the script, uh, like, uh, triggers, then the scalars will be the same. Uh, on the opposite side, there is a CRDT-like structures called stream and map. Uh, there are two, like, CRDT-like. By CRDT-like, I mean that there are CRDT, like, forces value, to, like, forces merge function to be commutative. In our way, it's non-commutative. Uh, that's why I uh, call it CRDT-like. And so, actually, it's, yes, uh, also, regarding these properties, we also uh, satisfy properties of idempotence of, and some other mon monoidic properties. Um, okay, and there is a, Third, third uh, value, value type is called canonicalized. Uh, so regarding the right side, so to this CRDT, now it's only possible to write values. But if you want to read, you need to fix stream or map on a particular, on a particular peer. You need to like kind of obtain result, obtain a particular copy that you want to read from. And uh, with this uh, value type, it's like possible to do with canon instruction. And, uh, but why is it different, uh, like, uh, value type? Because it have mixed algebra between scalars and streams. Uh, if you want to, like, uh, I know, more details, you please ask me questions because it's so, uh, so much for one talk. Okay, now let's see three slides about how we uh, implemented AcuVM in our stack. So on Fluence Labs, we have a network, and every network consists of peer. And peer actually uh, is a layer structure uh, that's, uh, like started with a lib P2P is a networking layer <clears throat> and the next layer there is a peer core. Peer core actually is a manager of queues. Uh, actually there are more than three queues in a peer but it doesn't matter for uh, for like kind of high level overview of architecture. And there are two pools, pools of Aqua VMs. That's a kind of compute engine or orchestration engine. And a, a pool of services and services is a computation layer. Services basically, so we are using interface types uh, and service basically is a, a like a bunch of modules combined together. We use interface types as model linking. Uh, services is a bunch of modules combined together with uh, shared nothing linking scheme, and they run in our runtime called Marine. Uh, and both AquaVM also run in our runtime. This runtime allows you to run this multi-module setup even in browser. So on the clients, so like for example, we can think about our network as a kind of P2P network with Kademlia. <coughs> And the browser could also like serve services, for example. But actually, actually, it's not. But it's possible. It's, it's like it's, it's not a, a really handy, but it's possible. And on each peer on our network, there is an Aqua VM run in our Marine runtime or WebAssembly, whatever. It doesn't matter. So actually, Aqua VM could be compiled to native uh, because it's a pure function and it's, it's not really. A, it's kind of like algorithmic code and uh, not so many dependencies on that. So now network is permissionless and incentivized. I will show you next slide uh, how exactly. It's auditable and uh, we are now ma making it provable. Uh, every node is a coordinator or in other words, we can say that it's coordinator free. There is no uh, like particular set of coordinators. There is no consensus between set like for example in Blackwell's uh, solution. Every node runs AquaVM and every node coordinates requests. And that's why no implicit consensus required. And uh, so we're now working on incentivization layer. And for that, we came up with the idea of golden particle. Uh, every node mines like network packet, and when it satisfies some condition, then, then node submitted to uh, on-chain part, and for chain part, we like uh, now wanted to use Filecoin virtual machine. And on on-chain part, there is also AquaVM that's run on FVM instead of Marine. 
Uh, and this on-chain part verifies that all topological hopes is correct, are, are correct. Yes, that all proofs are, are also correct. And every peer that formed this like particular packet will be rewarded. So now on an on-chain we know like when, like we know all topological hops and we know each peer, each service that participated in, the, in this packet. We, we call it particle actually. Uh, and all of these peers will be uh, rewarded. For example, these three, three peers and client, for example. <clears throat> okay, now let's talk a bit about our DCC working group. So we are working on the problem more than three years and uh, we're working on WebAssembly and all this distributed stuff more than five years. And we have kind of a lot of experience on that area. And also there is a lot of like, a lot more problems that should be solved there. And we believe that uh, our approach could be used in different companies. And if we unite together uh, developers, researchers, and people who cares about that, then it would be, would be really huge. And we thrilled to announce that we start, we established distributed choreography and composition working group. Uh, so it will be, um, so I will show you on the last slide, so links to our resources. But there is some motivation, yeah? But like the main motivation is to build a great, great tooling, is to build like great algorithms, is a like a move progress further. It's main, main, for example, my motivation. It's really, there are a lot of really beautiful problems. For example, like the reason category theory, like, so like uh, yesterday we like, uh, so I prepared this presentation and for example, I thought about, oh, there is a, like monad and category theory and we have this commutative diagram and you have like this commutative diagram follows rhombus pattern. Can we like obtain some other like patterns and apply it in our, in our pattern? So there are a lot of beautiful problems there uh, and a lot of like minds required to uh, discuss them, to solve them. Uh, and on this slide is actually last slide of my presentation. You could see two uh, QR codes. Left side is a four uh, telegram group, it's DCC uh, uh, working group, and the rest, right one is for uh, GitHub, uh, where all material will be located. So we are thinking now that the next uh, call uh, will be in uh, two or three weeks. Uh, we'll have discussion on a working group and establish time. So uh, please, everyone who are interested in that, who want to participate, uh, who want to like uh, move progress further, then please join. If you have any questions, so please ask me, please find me there or for example, uh, contact me with my email, my telegram or whatever. So you show this fork chain diagram, how many t tasks can you have on one time in this, dia in this system? Uh, so it depends, it depends uh, on like, so actually uh, I can't uh, say you any, any particular numbers now, but uh, like we have a network team and uh, I can contact them mm -hmm. and uh, you came up with a question, with answer. Okay, but there's like more than one task at one time. Of course, time. of course, yeah. Okay, and how do you handle, so I assume they're like heterogeneous uh, servers, right? How do you handle these um, rest of tasks are waiting for their peers to finish? Um, so for that we have this, uh, so we are using Tokyo Runtime Mm -hmm. So our no, our peer like so we have actually two peer implementation in JavaScript and in Rust, uh, and for this two peer implementation we have a pool of services, and uh, this execution of services they are absolutely asynchronous. When the result is ready, then this result is came to the queue, and by peer core is transmitted to proper Aqua VM. Aqua VM uh, thanks to their uh, to their uh, like interface. Uh, get this core result as an input with a previous state. Previous state located somewhere on a disk on database somewhere locally. And it merges this core result in this previous state. Mm -hmm. And for example, for this particular core result, there will be kind of new, new, like new, sorry, new, new state and a new list of peers provided, for example, or, or not. It depends. Like in this particular example that we, that I missed, yeah, this one, that I, I, I said that's okay, uh, I just, we just assume that it's executed somehow. In particular, this call not executed synchronously. So Aqua VM uh, captures all arguments. Here, here it's empty list, but okay, let's uh, consider this example. All arguments and provided this call request is the output of Aqua VM. And then it's through queues, uh, came to the marine services and provides back.
Okay, uh, how do you handle that there is no kind of cash overflow where too many uh, unfinished tasks are waiting? Uh, we have a pattern timeout. Okay. And pattern timeout naturally expressed with pi calculus, with a par instruction. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for questions. Really great.